Spoiler warning for episodes 1 to 4 of Jujutsu Kaisen all throughout this video. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everybody, my name's Link, here to talk about my first impressions on the fall 2020 anime. Ah yes, Jujutsu Kaisen. This season's hype train. I don't think there's an anime fan that hasn't heard what Jujutsu Kaisen is unless you've been living under a rock. But we're an all-exclusive bunch here, so let me bring up the summary real quick. A boy fights for the right death. Hardship, regret, shame. The negative feelings that humans feel become curses that lurk in our everyday lives. The curses run rampant throughout the world, capable of leading people to terrible misfortune and even death. What's more, the curse can only be exercised by another curse. Itadori Yuji is a boy with tremendous physical strength. Though he lives a completely ordinary high school life, one day, to save a friend who has been attacked by curses, he eats the finger of the double-faced specter, taking the curse into his own soul. From then on, he shares one body with the double-faced specter, guided by the most powerful sorcerers, sorcerers? Plural? Godo Satori. Itadori is admitted to the Tokyo Metropolitan Technical High School of Sorcery, an organization that fights the curses. And thus begins the heroic tale of a boy who becomes a curse to exercise a curse, a life from which he could never turn back. A nice and sweet intro. It's very to the point. It basically tells you what happens in the first two episodes of the anime. Though I do wonder, like, we're, okay, we're not here to judge the summary, of course, but when it said friend, weren't there two? Like, does this count as only that one friend that's a girl, or the dude that literally got put in the hospital? Checking the tags, we have a lovely combination of action, demons, fantasy, shounen, and supernatural. Though, I do think it's missing a horror tag. It's my favorite kind, too. If you want me to elaborate on that, then I have a whole video about it. Okay, shameless plug over. And while I agree it also has its fair share of graphic imagery here and there, something about the horror is aesthetically pleasing almost. The series first caught my attention when it still had that image of Sukuna Shrine as its preview picture. And even if the summary didn't catch my attention at first, that haunting image of a deformed and horrific shrine with such a gritty art style had me instantly hooked. And... <sighs> Studio Mappa. Okay, hold on, let me explain myself here. Nothing against this studio, it's just that my first impression of them were from the Yuri and Ice era. They always had the most amazing and beautifully animated first three episodes. Nothing has impressed me in a long time than Victor's performance in episode one. But the moment you get past those first three episodes, the quality just immediately flatlines. At first I was willing to shrug it off like, Ah, uh, it's because it's ice skating. Skating goes so fast and it's hard to animate, along with the fact that they're basically just dancing and gliding, and, and I've seen my fair share of idol anime from that era. But then come Banana Fish. Amazing first few episodes again. And once again, the quality drops. Dororo happened, and it's like watching history repeat itself over and over again. Yes, I know MAPPA isn't the only studio ever to have animation quality drops, Studio Nas literally birthed a new meme with their adaption of Dramatical Murder. But the higher the anticipation, the harder the disappointment. It's just so disheartening to be hooked on such an amazing opening act, and then only have to slog for an interesting story but with a disappointing execution. And yes, I know that's not always the case. A set as in mine happened, and it didn't have any quality drops. And just recently, there was God of High School that had intense and fluid fight scenes all the way through the final episodes. But those were all collaborations of some sort. I won't bore you with all the hypothetical possibilities of what this could all mean, like more funding or more hands on it, etc. But as I can see, Jujutsu Kaisen is another MAPPA solo act. So when the episode started to drop, and I saw that all those cool fight scenes in the trailer were basically the whole of episode 1 and 2, I couldn't help myself from feeling the slight bit of apprehension. But hey, I could be completely wrong and all these concerns are unfounded because of episode 4 with one of the biggest flexes in the fall anime lineup was absolutely amazing. 
I haven't been sold on just how terrifyingly overpowered a character is this hard. They make you realize just what kind of horrible creature is actually inside the main character, and there are very few who can do anything about it. Also completely unrelated to the last point, guys with long lashes are culture. That is incredibly big dick of them. Especially you, Gojo Sensei. You can try to hide them, but I know you have the prettiest lashes out of them. I know it! Speaking of Gojo Sensei, he and Sikana are my two favorite characters by far. They both exude this sense of cockiness that's completely warranted, considering just how minuscule of a threat everyone else is. Gojo Sensei is such a fun and friendly character, but also kind of a dipshit. He feels like a great guy to hang out with. Though, despite his naturally laid-back and goofy humor, there's no way you can't not spot his love for his students and how he'll want to protect them. But at the same time, the moment he arrives, he doesn't mind teasing them a little bit or give them some lion throwing its cup over the ditch type of lessons because he's just that confident that nothing will happen to them now that he's there. Meanwhile, Sikana has the swagger and nonchalance of someone who lives on the top of the world. Literally untouchable. But also, interestingly enough, he's fair? Almost? I don't really know what to call that scene after he killed that special grade in episode 4 where he was calling out to Itadori to take his body back, willingly relinquishing his own vessel because up to now we're led to believe that Itadori has inhuman-like control over his conscience and can actually push Sukuna's ego back with his own. You know, Sukuna, the king of curses, and that being the whole exorcism world fears. I wouldn't know if that would be called honor. But he is holding himself with great pride by willingly letting go his hold on the body instead of putting up a struggle. I mean, he could just very well not be bothered to waste his time if he knows it's on the behest of a kid that pisses him off. But there's something in that, hey kid, it's over, come back now, spill that he did it, gives me the thinking thoughts. Okay, so here's the hard part with giving off impressions for stories like these. It's definitely gearing up to be a long-run kind of anime. It's taking its sweet time to fully introduce its core cast, and so I only have the bare minimum to go off of story-wise. Like, Itadori is an idiot with a heart of gold, Megumi is a sourpuss with a heart of gold, and Kogisaki's assertive with a heart of gold. Episode 4 seems to be where the real story is about to take off, though there is one tiny bit that had me interested. The part where Sikuna doesn't mind Itadori dying because he's only eaten two fingers and is only a tenth of his full power. This put it up my mind so much, imagining that as the series goes on and Itadori eats more of his fingers, then he's going to turn more and more valuable to Sikuna, and he'll actually put an effort to keep him alive, which I assume will only get harder as stronger enemies appear. Add to this, I'm guessing that the more he eats, then even his miraculous control over Sikuna and his body will be tested and that Sukuna might actually manage to break free from time to time. I'm wondering if Sukuna will try to connect with Itadori for a bit. It'd be hilarious if they somehow make like a grumpy buddy cop kinda combination. Because Itadori doesn't know shit about the world of curses, and Sukuna seems to like teaching other people. That'd be kinda cute. Though, I don't think they'll get to that point within the 24 episodes they're going to adapt, depending on the pace it's going. Otherwise, I'm trying to hold my hype back a bit for this series, if it wasn't already obvious. This studio has had a history of disappointing me, so I'm hesitant to believe that these amazing Sakuga moments will last. I don't really like comparing big shonen titles, but I'm waiting for a Demon Slayer episode 19 kind of moment to fully have me hooked onto the anime. That one strong story beat accompanied by the amazing visuals. For now, I'm lying in wait and enjoying what's given. And that's it for this one, everybody. Leave a comment on what you think about the anime so far down below. I think I might be a minority in keeping my hype down, so I'd love to see what you guys think. Check out my playlist for the other first impressions of the season. And my other series where I review and recommend anime you might not have heard of. Are they hidden gems, or do they deserve to fall into obscurity? Let's find out together. 
And as always, don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked the video and please consider subscribing for all things weeb and anime. Bye-bye!